Now that we've built out our hero section, projects section, and our project pages, we can move on to our clients section, which will look like this. And this one's pretty simple. We're going to drag in a section element. Just like we've done before, we're going to add a class. We're going to add our standard section class, which is called section. Now, before we move on, let's create a combo class. That way we can make changes to this section that don't affect the base class, the original section class. And we'll start with a gradient, a linear gradient. The first stop, of course, is a hex color that, when spelled backwards and translated to English, says something secret. The second stop, of course, 2014's color of the year, FFF5F5. And once we've defined those gradient stops, we can adjust the angle. We can do this manually right here, about 315 degrees looks good, and when we're done, we can close out of that background gradient configuration. Let's go to the add panel and drag in a div block. Again, same drill, we're going to use our container class. And once that container class has been applied, we're going to do what is quite possibly the greatest part of this entire course. We're going to create a client's collection. And it's only gonna have two fields, two collection fields. One is the name that's already there by default, and two is the logo. That's it, only two fields. Let's create our collection. And from here, we'll go to import. Now, we could be doing this manually, one by one. That works fine too, we can do that using the CMS. But in this case, to save time for this video, we've done this in a CSV. So let's map each of these to our existing fields. We'll map to the name, and of course, we'll map to the image. Let's hit import, and we're done. That's our full list. Now, how do we use that? Well, we already know how to use that. We've done it before. We're gonna drag in a collection list, and we're gonna bind that list to our collection. And when we do that, we have a row for each collection item. Dell, Intuit, DirecTV, Starfleet, one of those is not on the screen. But when we drag an image element into one of them, an image element appears in all of them, because as we design inside of a collection item, inside a collection list, everything's done in lockstep. So we're making adjustments here to the size, but what'll really help is if we select that collection list and affect flex layout. We'll set to horizontal by default, and we'll wrap the children. So each of these children, not the image, but the collection item, each of these collection items can have its own flex item properties. We'll choose flex basis, we'll adjust the basis to 20%, and that gives us, of course, five across. And that looks pretty good. We're testing responsiveness, and that looks good. Let's check tablet, mobile landscape, mobile portrait even looks good. Mobile portrait's a little tiny. Maybe for flex basis, we can adjust and make 50% or two across. That looks pretty good. Each of these sizes looks reasonable. If we test responsiveness, we'll see that everything scales based on the width of the device. Okay, going all the way back up to the top, let's grab our H2, our section title, alt drag into the section below. Of course, we'll want to place it neatly in the container so that everything's conformed and held neatly towards the center. And once we do, we can now change the word work to clients. Now we have a section title. Now, we're gonna add some definition to the collection list wrapper. So with the collection list wrapper selected, let's create a new class called client wrapper, and we'll go down and add a border. We can make this whatever we want in terms of width. Let's do two pixels and a radius of five pixels. Now, let's go up and adjust padding. We can do it to all sides at once, but what could look better in this case, especially with the flex properties we've said, is to adjust just the left and right sides just holding down Option or Alt and dragging, adjusting both sides at once. That looks pretty good. Okay, final step, we need to check different breakpoints. In Tablet, we realize there's a bit of crowding, so let's actually take our padding all the way down to zero. That'll look good in Tablet, that'll look good in Mobile Landscape, and it looks good in Mobile Portrait. And that's it for this part of the course. That's where we can display our clients. Including this on our portfolio gives us a sense of legitimacy. From here, we're going to add a call to action and a persistent navigation menu.